Morning, morning folks. Good morning. Morning. Paul, Sheila, Bob, Ian, Alistair, Stuart, Kathleen. Hi Barbara. Hi Stuart. Hi Doug. Hamilton, nice to meet you Hamilton. Kevin. Hi Kevin, John. Hi Lynn. Diane. Tina. Morning James. Morning Sheila. Morning Alexander. Morning Trisha. Lynn. Murdo. Hi Paul. Hi Robert. Hi John. Steve. Alex. Mark, you are number 100 today, so let's get this broadcast underway. Okay. Um, it's Indy Truck Davy in the truck coming to you today from Cumbernauld, where it's a beautiful morning and uh, it is 13 degrees. Okay. Davy, I need to get a jumper off. It's getting a bit warm. All right. Morning, morning, Marlene. We'll start today as we always do. Coronavirus update. Then we're going to have a laugh about the news that was in the, that we were known yesterday. All right. So, corona, coronavirus update. These are the figures from 7 11 2021. Tested in Scotland, the pandemic reached their shores. Well done. Thank, thank day, David. <laughs> yeah, we're not doing well there, are we? Let's see. I'm on the review of the weekend, folks, and you only get yesterday's. You only get yesterday's. Right, testing in Scotland, the pandemic reached their shores. 3,482,293, that was plus 5,108 new people tested from Sunday to Monday. Tested positives in the pandemic reached their shores, 664,654, and that was plus 2,012 new cases from Sunday to Monday. In hospital, there are 803 COVID patients, that's up 10, of which... A 54 are in the intensive care units, and that is down 3. Vaccinated 3, 4,323,549 people in Scotland have had a dose of the vaccine, an increase of 1,392 people from Sunday to Monday. Of that, 4,323,549 people in Scotland, 3 million. 917,210 people have had two doses of the vaccine, an increase of 2,094 people from Sunday to Monday. Boosters, 986,741 people in Scotland have had a third dose of the vaccine, an increase of 28,796 people from Sunday to Monday. Right on well with the booster rollout. 81.9% of all over 12s in Scotland have, had, uh, have been vaccinated, 20.6% of all those eligible for the booster have had their booster. Okay, deaths. I'm happy to report there was no additional deaths registered from Sunday to Monday. So the hospital count stands at 9,293. Community and hospital deaths combined equals 11,672. Okay, folks, let's move on and renew, uh, review some of the news. And some of it was quite funny, actually, right? Um, some of the news stories for Monday. Okay, Monday started with one theme, one main story in the rags, and that was sleaze, Tory corruption and sleaze. A uh, wall to wall sleaze, but uh, we'll put that to one side because that comes later in the, in the report. Okay, and the only outlier of a paper yesterday was the Herald. The Herald um, seems to be staying away from um, all the bad news about Westminster. Doesn't want to be telling its readers how bad, uh, badly run Westminster is. So the Herald went with um, a. It went with the story that staff at the Scottish Qualifications Associ a, um, Authority are being balloted on potential strike action, according to Unite um, the Unite Union. Now its members at the SQA have not been consulted on the pro a, proposed a, reforms of the Scottish Qualifications Authority into a new Qualifications Authority. Unite said its members are worried about. Um, you know, long-term job security, and quite rightly so, they should be, right? There's a Davy says, you know, they're right to be worried about it. Um, but when you get right, don't you? Um, the the consultation on replacing um the Scottish Qualifications Authority it started in August, um, and it's being led by Professor Ken Muir, 
Andy, well, this is September, October, November. They're only three months in. It's to report in February. So, you know, you've got to give them a chance to get round to talking to the staff and the trade unions at the SQA. Now, they've only got a narrow, a narrow window to look at reforming the SQA, but I don't imagine there'd be, there'd be that many layoffs, and I don't imagine that the terms and conditions that they'd be employed um, with the new agency under would be very different. But the thing about it is, generally, when these things happen, um, they take the chance to make what they call efficiency cuts. In other words, they cut the budgets and they cut the amount of people working there. So there will be some people transferred to other departments, I would imagine, but I don't imagine anybody would lose their job except for what they call natural wastage, i.e. people retiring and people leaving for other positions. But as I say, the Trade Union Unite and the people at the SQA are entitled to be a wee bit worried. OK, right, moving on. Um, eh. Monday, Glasgow bin men... Um, you know, they're reporting to be stopping their, their strike, right? But GMB takes the 14 issues that they had with the council um, eh, to their members, and their members say, ah, ah. So eh, the threat is there's going to be bin strikes there Christmas. Now, you know, the people of Glasgow are not going to take this well. We're in the middle of a health emergency. They've just had a huge um, eh, worldwide conference in their city, and they... Eh, the pandemic or uh, the COVID situation in Glasgow is about to get much worse. And here's a bin man throwing rubbish on top of it, which is another health hazard. That's not going to sit well, is it? Especially when the people of Glasgow know that the GMB union settled, bin men settled for 3% doing that road in Sheffield. But up here, they're going to strike your Christmas and have the shite pile up outside your door. And the Labour just haven't thought this one through because this is Labour. Now, what Labour are trying to do here, folks, and this is fucking hilarious, they're trying to make the city a mess while COP26 is on, they're trying to embarrass the council, they're trying to make the people of Glasgow feel embarrassed about the council, so that Labour have got a chance of winning the council back in the 2022 elections. But the bin men are with the GMB, and that's what we call the union for the stupid, the dummies. Right, and I'm sorry if I insult anybody that is a member of the GMB, I suggest you move. Because what the GMB did in Glasgow, fought uh, equal pay for women, put a structure in when they had to give women equal pay so that they couldn't get equal pay. And then the Labour Party in Glasgow Council spent 2.5 million quid trying to deny women equal pay. Scottish Government and then the SNP administration takes out at Glasgow Council, settled. This is a political strike. It doesn't look good in Labour having to get a scooby. If Anna Sarwa thinks by messing up the city and increasing the health hazards to the citizens of that city in the middle of a pandemic is going to win him a bloody election in Glasgow, he's half his effing chump. <laughs> but, you know, for all his private education, Sarwa's not the brightest big candle in the box, you know what I mean? So, but I feel sorry for the bin men because they've been played for mugs. They're the ones that are not going to have the money in their pocket because they're supposed to be low paid to pay for Christmas for their children, to maintain their bills, to be able to eat properly. The bin men haven't thought, thought this one through. They've rung an extra 14 concessions. It's not about pay. Apparently it's about conditions. They've rung uh, extra concessions for the council. Take your concessions and get back to work because... Labour Party's taking the piss out of you in the hope to win the council elections in 2022. And that's why the GMB's called the the, um, a, the, a, the union for the stupid, or the union for mugs, because... Um, and people can disagree with me here if they want, but, hey, you know, it's called the union for mugs for a reason. It's because the Labour Party manipulate the members for political gains. They did it with the women's equal pay. And they have day again here with the bin men. As I said, they settled for 3% in Sheffield. <laughs> and they're pulling the people in Glasgow who are supposed to be low paid, remember, <coughs> out of work or Christmas when they're going to be skint. Uh, they are being used and manipulated as political tools. And as I say, that's why they call the GMB the Union for Mugs. If I was you folks, I would move to um, one or the other available. Um, a trade unions that are in the Glasgow City Council. I would get rid of the GMB. As I say, the Labour Party use uses mugs for political gain. And if the Labour Party think they're winning next year's council elections by piling shite high in Glasgow, they'll get absolutely no chance, especially in the middle of a health pandemic. And at Christmas when people have got all that crap to get ready. <laughs> right, let's move on. 
Now we're on Monday. Um, America opens its borders to um, a visitors from the EU and from Prague Island here in the UK. Right, to mark the occasion, um, BA and Virgin Atlantic set up a, a publicity stunt um, to promoted by the state propaganda machine so much for the BBC No Dane adverts. It was wall to wall on the BBC yesterday that Virgin Atlantic and B BA were flying off in the north and south runways that he threw together. Absolutely mental, right? And this has been trumpeted right across the BBC. That's an advertising stunt and a half. But you've got to ask yourself, you know, why is it that uh, the BBC are doing this? Well, it's quite dead similar to take people's minds off the fact there's no crisps in the co-op, there's no, there's no fresh food in the Tesco's, and the Asda's, and the Morrison's, there's bugger on the shelf, fuel prices have just hit a record £1.50 a litre. <laughs> Uh, uh, and uh, what is the mainstream broadcaster diverting people? Wait, fat gammons flying off to New York to spend money on Christmas presents because there's not going to be bugger on the shops here. <laughs> now, why the plebs in England are falling for this crap, I have no idea because they won't be flying to um, uh, New York to buy their Christmas presents. They won't be. They'll be sitting in the hoosk at Christmas looking at the money that they're no making because of strike action through the GMB and saying, what bill am I going to pay? Am I going to make it through the uh, Christmas? That's the truth here. But that was a political stunt and a half yesterday, a diversionary stunt by the straight propaganda machine. And it broke its own bloody charter rules because it promoted two private businesses while doing it. That's called bloody advertising. And all that, so the plebs don't notice that, eh? <laughs> They've run out of cheesy watts that's on the shelves. <laughs> ah, brilliant. Wait, they run out of fucking beer. <laughs> oh, dear. Shite in their water. They're drinking water. They're pumping effluence into their own drinking water, which is the water course he's doing that road. Shit's running short on the shelves. Fuel prices at a record high. And how does a state propaganda machine try to uh, um, uh, divert the attention? They advertise two private companies that are flying to New York so that the fat gammons can fly here, the ones with money can fly here, and buy crimbo presents that are not going to be on the shelves here in the UK. <laughs> Ah, you couldn't make it up. So the middle classes and the upper classes will be flying off to America for the winter warm weather or to buy their bloody shopping. And uh, yeah, the plebs are all being pipe dreamed it into their television sets to divert them for the fact that there's shite in their water, E. coli in their drinking water, E. coli in their sea water because the effluent's been pumped in by the gallon. There's no cheesy watch that's on the shelves. Running out of fresh vegetables. <laughs> and even the ambient stuff that was being stored in large numbers in big warehouses right across the UK is starting to run out now and all. <laughs> so the BBC have taken the advertising for Virgin, <laughs> uh, Virgin Atlantic and the <laughs> British Airways. You could not make it up. Right, where are we? Moving on. Uh, uh, Monday, the propaganda machine, the BBC, Run a story saying that Nicola Sturgeon has uh, carved out a role for herself at COP26. Damn right she is. We've even got idiots here in Scotland thinking that she's that Scotland and the Scottish government's hosting it because of the way the state propaganda machines went on. What they forget is she wasn't even allowed into the blue zone. She was excluded. Bojo was going to allow the odd salt tyre here and there, but he wanted the place covered in Union Jacks, and he didn't want Nicola Sturgeon anywhere near it. But anyway, she's carved herself a niche at the COP26, and world leaders are lining up to meet her. We even had a, um, we even had the head of the UN, um, where's his name? Uh, the United Nations, he praised Scotland and Nicola Sturgeon, uh, Abdullah uh, Shahid, he praised Scotland and Nicola Sturgeon for uh, being a wonderful place to hold the conference, and that Nicola Sturgeon is a, um, in Scotland are world leaders on COP, uh, own uh, environmental issues. Right, but that Bojo and all that, he didn't like that. But where was Bojo after the first two days of the conference? He was flying back to London on a, a private jet to talk to a climate change denier and try and uh, get his mate out of being done on sleaze charges, uh, paid advocacy. But we'll get to that. 
All right. So, um, where are we? We're doing here. So, you know, this idea that, uh, and what the BBC in this article was saying was that Nicola Sturgeon and the Westminster government have uh, come to an arrangement so that Nicola can present herself on the whole stage. Like, what a lot of bollocks. To say she wasn't allowed into the blue zone, she did it on the green zone and the civic events. But hey, uh, as we know, um, I've just said, I've just uh, um, read out that uh, Abdullah Shama, or Shamik, um, he praised Scotland and Nicola Sturgeon, and then with Biden, they didn't want her getting a picture with Biden, did they? <laughs> Biden rocks up to her at the, the civic event in Glasgow, and doesn't he just get a picture with her? He stands and talks to her for 10 minutes and presents her with a gift for the people of Scotland. Where's the gift for the people of England? Huh? Where was Bojo standing at the civic meeting with him? Nowhere, he was sitting in a chair, pushed out his face, being ignored by everybody. So world leaders have been queuing up to speak to Nicola Sturgeon. The other thing Nicola did was Bojo didn't want the notion of independence anywhere near it. So what did Nicola do? And the SNP, <laughs> a nation in waiting, welcomes the world. <laughs> and the nations of the world, absolutely brilliant stunt. Brilliant. And so independence and Nicola Sturgeon as a stateswoman herself are front and centre. Absolute front and centre at COP26. Meanwhile, Bojo's hiding in hospitals in the Shire in England, but we'll get to that. <laughs> and nobody in the planet wants to speak to the spanner anyway. <laughs> so the BBC tried to spin it to say that uh, Westminster moved out the road to let Nicola carve herself a niche at COP26 uh, well, and put Scotland at the forefront on the world map. You never heard so much passion all your life. But the news was good comedy yesterday, really. <laughs> ah... So, the uh, things that Westminster didn't want to happen have come to pass at COP26. Scotland, a nation in wait waiting, welcomes a nation in the world, so independence is splattered over every country in the world. <laughs> yeah, and world leaders are lining, lining up to speak to Nicola Sturgeon and Steve Bojo the clown. <laughs> yeah, are you raging, Bojo? Why? <laughs> okay. Yeah. As I say, the state propaganda machine has flipped its bloody lid. <laughs> okay. Hey, right, where were we? Hey, right. So the propaganda machine they, um, <laughs> has decided that hey, the reason why Nicola Sturgeon is such a success at COP26 is because the UK government came to an arrangement where and got out the bloody road to let her do it. <laughs> okay. And we thought Bojo was funny. Right, eh, where are we? Aye, moving on, right. Moving on, eh. Well, you know, that just brings us nicely to um, Bojo the Clown and what's going on down that road in the sleeves, all right. So that's where we're moving to the debate in Parliament yesterday for reforming parliamentary standards, eh. Um, down that road, right. Anyway, the debate was tabled with Lib Dem MP, um, eh, for North Fife. Wendy Chamberlain, hey, yeah, they're, they're, they're a name for you, Chamberlain. Hasn't that one got huge political significance? I wonder if it's a relative. Anyway, hey, she lets Bojo off the hook, didn't she? You know, the Lib Dems have been in bed with the Tories before, but Bojo is swimming in sleaze who are their own partisan. So, and the way they went about trying to change the standards for by, um, the uh, parliamentary standards um, uh, enforcement. So, Wendy Chamberlain gives them an out. Gives them an out. She tables a debate to say, well, this is something we have been talking about. Yet with Tory after Tory on telling us yesterday how upset they were at being whipped to get through the lobbies and how they thought the Parliamentary Standards Committee was working fine. And the Commissioner was great. But here we've got Wendy giving the Tories an out for their sleaze. Eh? Wendy Chamberlain, North East Fife, Lib Dem, giving the Tories an out. She tables a debate to take place in the Commons, and it happened, of course, yesterday. It took up all the afternoon right into the evening. It was still going on 7, 8 o'clock last night. Right, anyway, the debate, um, first up in the debate, it was Sir Keir Starmer, right? And he's up against the... He's up against Barker, Barkley, Steve Barkley. 
because Bojo the Clown couldn't be arsed showing up, but hey, let's face it, they didn't want that bumbling idiot anywhere near the bloody debate. So he's scheduled, apparently, on a long-term commitment to visit a hospital in North East England, in one of the shires up there, to promote the rollout of the booster. Hey, the, back, the Brexit bounce is gone, the vaccine bounce is gone, they've got Bojo hiding behind the booster bounce. A booster we're not supposed to need, by the way, because the vaccines are shite. That's the reason why Pfizer and Mercer have come up with an antiviral pill instead, <laughs> or to go with. <laughs> anyway, Bojo is a way up to play the, bra the, the vaccine card in the North East to keep him out the road, because let's face it, he's up to his bloody neck and his sleeves and all. And the part, and the... Um, the Commissioner, Cass Catherine Stone, um, she's about to look into him and his flat renovation. <laughs> okay. Anyway, first up, first up was Sir Keir Starmer. And he, and he accused the Tories of sleaze and corruption. Um, eh, the PM and Deputy PM will never be seen, as I said. So Steve Bar Barclay's taking the pill. As Mr Barclay apologised for the Conservatives' handling of the whole affair and said the way they went about it was a mistake. Ah, you're no kidding, eh? <laughs> yeah, trying to get your mate off the hook <laughs> and trying to get this thing changed before Bojo gets his ass dragged across the coals. <laughs> Ah, that is sleazy corruption. But hey, you've got to get this. Sir Cobra Starmer, hey, you know, he replied, um, he, you know, he, he says that, uh, say, um, that the Tory party had given the green light to corruption. Me talking about corruption's all on its own. Anyway, as Davey says, Starmer, Sir Starmer the corrupt, slagging off a uh, Bojo. I mean, he talked about Pretty Patel and the, the, the gatekeeper of um, the Ministerial Code. Pretty Patel breaks the Ministerial Code, so the gatekeeper has to go to be replaced by Lord Gates, who's in Bojo's pocket. Patel keeps the job. The previous gatekeeper gets his ass kicked out the door. Right? But it's the armour calling. It's the, it's the pot calling the kettle black. You know, this is the guy who's MP, who's just, had to, who's just been dragged through the courts for threatening behaviour, threatening to throw acid in some love rival's face. This is the guy who protected Westminster and establishment paedophiles while he was ahead of the Crown prosecution. And this guy started in the Parliament talking about corruption. He got his knighthood for protecting BBC and Westminster paedophiles. Guys like Cyril Smith and Jimmy Savile. <laughs> And he's standing there pontificating on corruption by the Tories, fully bought and paid for statesmen, owned by the state, right up to his neck and sleaze and corruption, protecting paedophiles. And he's standing talking about somebody taking a couple of quid and <laughs> as a backhander for lobbying. Uh, he facilitated children being fucking tampered with. <laughs> and he started there pontificating about sleaze and corruption. You couldn't make it up. Now there's comedy that writes its feckin' self. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, anyway, let's move on. Next up was Wendy Chamberlain, the one that tabled it. She shows her, she shows her anger at Bojo no showing up so he can get his body spanked, sent her in the naughty step with a hundred lines. <laughs> okay, and she goes on and pontificates about how they do need to reform things and there should be an appeals, uh, um, there should be an appeals uh, process there, which uh, may, may well be a valid point, maybe there should be an appeals thing there. But all it's going to do is kick the, kick the outcome down the road a wee bit. Because as far as I can tell, looking at how things are done through the um, Standards Commissioner and the Parliamentary Committee on Standards, which is a cross-party committee, it seems to be a judgment of your peers. It's as fair as any court, as I can see. But hey-ho, maybe there should be, like the courts, there should be an appeals process there. So maybe Wendy's got a point. But she was just letting the Tories off the hook, so you know that. Anyway, next up, next up is the SNP's Pete Wishard, right? And Pete, he's, he's wanting the police to investigate um, a money for peerhoods. Absolutely, absolutely phenomenally funny, right? He says that uh, the price of the peerhoods went from 1 million under Tony Blair to 3 million under Bojo. <laughs> 
Tony Treasure, there's a man to raise three million, get an automatic seat in the bloody in the house, of, and thieves and carpet baggers up a chamber, right? Anyway, he wants a um, the Met Police to deliver it, but Pete Wisher doesn't seem to be the brightest guy in the box either, does he? Because heading up the Met is Dame Clarissa Dick. You know the name. <laughs> She's a peer of the realm. <laughs> Uh, let's go and get the cops to investigate uh, the, 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 the House of Lords when the Met Cop herself sits in the House of Bloody Lords. <laughs> <coughs> or she could if she wanted to take up her chair. <coughs> the clues in the name. Talk about fucking corruption. Dame Clarissa Dick. <laughs> uh, and, and the Tory party have just spent all year protecting her. You know, they're all the mistakes she's made. Policing um, protests in London, especially the, the Sarah Everett uh, episode. So, <laughs> Pete Wishart wants the Met headed up by Dame, call us a dick, <laughs> to investigate the Tory party for a uh, peerage for cash. You never had so much fish in your life. <laughs> anyway, uh, this morning, in an attempt, to implicate the SNP in the same thing, the BBC here in Scotland points out that the SNP are in being, being investigated for 600,000 quid for Indie F2 that's supposed to be missing. But apparently the Electoral Commission have passed all the books and everything's in order. It's just the money's in general funds and it'll be spent when it comes to Indie F2. I'd like to see them try and make something out of that about the Alba Party. I mean, that's no disrespect, no disrespect the Alba Party, you know. Um, hey, everybody's looking for a political gain somewhere. You know, but the Electoral Commission said there's no dirty play here, the money's there, it's just to be spent when the time comes. It's in general funds. All right, but uh, Pete, Pete Wisher, being stupid enough to ask Dame Clarissa Dick, <laughs> the, the clues in the name, it's a bit like Steer, uh, Sir Keir Starmer, you know, <laughs> to investigate the House of Lords and money for getting the access to get a seat in the House of Lords. Oh, mental. I think Pete's flipped his bloody lid. <laughs> Anyway, the debate was pure comedy gold, and uh, I have to say, it's uh, a good few years of my life, I'm just no getting back again. <laughs> but the funniest bit when Starmer gets up and accuses anybody of corruption, Davy was rolling about the desk, <laughs> <laughs> laughing as he daff. <laughs> I tell you, there's going to be comedy in it today. Anyway, moving on. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> Moving on. Hey, Friday. Hey, Barack Obama rocks up in Glasgow to sprinkle a little stardust on COP27, doesn't he? He stands there and he pontificates about island nations and all this and how he doesn't need to worry, how he has to worry about things like traffic and all that again now he's no president. The guy's chauffeur driven, there's six, <laughs> six busloads of bodyguards behind him and he's talking about having to worry about bloody traffic. <laughs> He wants to see the M8 at one o'clock on a Friday in the Kingston Bridge when everybody finishes work early. That's fucking traffic. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, Barack Obama's in town. He gives his speeches at the, at the COP, tells world leaders are for no day enough, telling naughty Russia and naughty China are for no bloody well showing up. Then he buggers off for a, <laughs> for a chinwag with some some uh, um, Glasgow University students to try and get ideas on how to progress <laughs> climate <say> protection. <laughs> He's in the right place. Glasgow University's got a history of producing really great scientists and really great academics. <laughs> hey, if you can't find them in America, it'd be well coming to Glasgow to meet some. <laughs> Climate engineers, we've got honours of the buggers, we've got honours of the buggers here in Scotland. It's what we're good at, you know. All these late, all these dark nights in the winter, sitting in front of the fire with a wee hofkies, you plenty of time to think and invent shit. <laughs> or in Davy's case, study this stuff and laugh like hell. <laughs> ah, anyway, Barack Obama's in town, and the stardust is sparkling all over Glasgow, and he. You know, there's people following them about like puppies with their tongue hanging out. <laughs> ah, brilliant. Anyway, any promote fuck any promote COP twenty six, every little help, see. Right, and the final story, um eh, before I move on to what the papers have to say, 
is that the Monday DUP leader Sir Geoffrey Donaldson says talks with the EU over the NI protocols are no going well. Ah well, as Davy says. <laughs> Looks like there's a trade war in the offing, folks. Little England's just to get that much little. No, just as the water course is full of shite, the life and yours is about to become much more shite anyway. <laughs> uh, hey, when they <coughs> the trigger Article 16, the EU's going to collapse the um, uh, cooperation and trade agreement with the UK, isolating the UK, but uh, <laughs> Biden... Biden's going to play a belter, he's going to smack Westminster for the other side and sanction them and put trade embargoes on with the UK and all. You think the shelves are empty the new? <laughs> Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Get your saw out, grandad. <laughs> it's going to be wooden giraffes for the wings this year, the PlayStations. <laughs> So the idiot Frost, hey, he's thinking about triggering Article 16. Sir Geoffrey Donaldson in the DUP, he's whooping them on. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Meanwhile, the supermarket shelves are already bare. The English have got shite floating about in their water courses where they get their drinking water. <laughs> Fuel prices and cost of living shooting through the bloody roof. And these idiots are contemplating a trade war they can't win. Wow. If that's no comedy, man, sometimes this shit writes itself. <laughs> Ah, stupid as stupid does. I think all that shite and the drinking water down there might have sent them a wee bit loopy. And there was me thinking for a while it might have been the education system. <laughs> ah, mental. Absolutely mental. So there you have it, kiddies. Trade war coming right up. Shouldn't they laugh about it? It's going to be bloody serious. <laughs> Ah, let's move on to the what's more than and see what the papers have to say. No doubt Sleaze will be right up there. <laughs> ah, Sleaze will be right up there, that's for sure. Yeah, anyway, you know, if the day, I'm, I'm going to get serious here for a minute if I can do it without laughing. If these are the day, trigger Article 16, and uh, the trade and cooperation um, deal with the EU collapses, Biden is going to come in behind them and they are going to smack and smack and smack because if that drops, that trade and cooperation agreement and the NI protocol fails, then a hard border's got to go up on the island of Ireland and all hell is going to break loose. So I would imagine that very soon there'll be a border pole in Northern Ireland, probably next year sometime, and uh, Northern Ireland will be leaving the Union because they're quite happy with the protocol with the ordinary people. The supply chains of our have already explained have realigned. They can source their medicines through the newly nationalised Southern Irish Health Board, um, NHS. I don't think they'll be putting it back into public hands. I might be wrong. I don't live in Southern Ireland. Any of you guys that day, you can let me know what you think they're going to do about it. But all the wee things that were out of alignment between the North and the South are now aligned. And given the choice and looking at the way Westminster have treated the people in Northern Ireland, I imagine that they would vote to leave. And if they do, there'll be no dark money funneling into Scotland to try and stop Indy Ref 2 and a yes, a yes win. So the sequence of events seem to be overtaking themselves. Everybody thought Scotland would be the first one out the door. It's beginning to look like Northern Ireland might be. And England might quickly follow them. Opinion polls in England are pretty high on the idea of the breakup of the UK. Right, let's move on to this morning about the papers, I have to say, because I want to get funny again. <laughs> anyway, the hair goes with Obama. World leaders are still failing, um, uh, falling short in crisis COP26. Right, the Scotsman has a rallying cry to the world as Obama says, do more. Yeah, sprinkling the stardust. <laughs> Yeah, wonderful. The record has COP26 firearm drama. Dun, dun, dun. A armed police a make arrests just stones throw from where former US President Barack Obama addressed delegates. Main headline, COP swoop for gun suspect. A wee bit of drama. Yeah. We like a bit of drama. <laughs> just no costume dramas. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, most of the drama I get is on Facebook is these bams go off your chump at each other. <laughs> oh, sorry, my friends go off the chump at each other. <laughs> right, the Times has anger as PM skip sleaze show. <laughs> hey, sleaze show down in Commons, that's because he's up in the northeast, a uh, bump in Erams and walking around bloody um, uh, a hospital for a coronavirus patient with a mask on. I mean, we talk about thick, and you see him there, I don't know if you've seen the pictures of him, he looks like a fat orangutan in white, an albino orangutan, that's what he looks like, a big fat albino orangutan, man. Right, the National goes with, investigate this man again, it's a picture of Bojo the Clown, SMP call on police to investigate Bojo, um, um, over, a uh, and, and peerages, right, as I say, this is just pure comedy gold, isn't it? We're going to ask Dame Clarissa Dick of the Metropolitan Police, who's just been shielded by Bojo and his corrupt cabal, <laughs> to investigate corruption in the Tory party. Just not going to happen, is it? <laughs> I think Pete must have been on the bevy yesterday lunchtime when he threw that one up. <laughs> <coughs> right, the eye goes with. PM refuses to apologise for trying to tear up sleaze rules. So as you can see, the UK-wide publications are going back on the sleaze story. The Metro has. I'm the Prime Minister, get me out of here. Bojo no shoe in the Commons. Boris Dodge's common sleaze debate. <laughs> uh, the Looney Rag the Express has. Just say sorry for the mess, Prime Minister. Now, in that article, um, the Express reckons that people will forgive Bojo if he just says sorry for a mistake. But that's why he sent Bartley, you see. I don't think Bartley went to Eton. And those who went to Eton are, are taught not to apologise even for their mistakes. All right, apparently it's a sign of weakness to say you're sorry. All right, who was that? That was a loony rag the Express. The fail, the fail, the fail's turned on Bojo, by the way. It really has turned on Bojo. They're having a right go at Bojo the Daily Feel. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a Feel fan, but <laughs> they're having a right go. Um, and the Feel, eh, um, it's headline. As Boris bottles out of the sleaze showdown, Mail reveals Tory grandee who was paid one million for a year's what I am one one million a year, um, and spent weeks in a eh, Caribbean while Commons was sitting. Right, and the main headline, Top MP earns um, fortune working in tax haven. Now, this is uh, the MP Geoffrey Cox QC, who took time off to go and do a second job in the, in the Caribbean, or uh, working um, to get money squirreled away into tax havens, where he was paid a million quid to get money into tax havens. All right, so that's the next sleaze story. Um, and they tell it, but as I say, that's the Daily Mail. They're going after Bojo now. They're going after Mo Bojo. And, he, you know, um, the other thing is, Open Democracy and the, the Times, they did that piece on a, the one million to three million quid to buy a peerage. So, you know, the, the tide is turning on Bojo. Anyway, the Telegraph avoids the sleaze altogether. And it says, and this is the Scottish version, by the way, mask risk long-term harm to vulnerable pupils. They say, but this is just a diversionary thing. Because if you're a vulnerable pupil, um, especially in Scotland, then you will have an exemption for wearing your mask in school. If you have a respiratory problem, it means you can't wear a mask. <coughs> then you will have an exemption. So this is a made-up, contrived story to stay away from because it is, let's face it, it's the, the Telegraph, and it's as Tory as you get. So it wants to stay out of the sleaze thing. Um, right. Um, and the star. Well, what's the star go for us today, kids? The star, the star has. What the fuck's going on here? Um. Sorry about that, folks. Anyway, the star has um, crisps crisis. Psst. Want to buy a bag of cheesy watches? <laughs> hey, Walker shortage set to last 
at least another month, a uh, another month, and a uh, now chances sell packets for eight pound a pop on eBay. So you've got if you've got a big bag of cheesy watts that's in your cupboard, you will to get um a eight quid a pop pair of small bag, um if you stick them on eBay. Apparently, big fat chunky, uh, sorry, big chunky Mark McGowan, the taxi driver, uh, the um. The artist taxi driver's not going to be chuffed, is he? He keeps going down his local co-op and there's no bloody crisps on the shelves. He's going to have his dinger. <laughs> He's also losing a lot of weight. <laughs> They'll not be calling him Chunky Mark McGowan for much longer. <laughs> okay. That's what I've got for you today, folks. I hope you found it entertaining and I hope you found it informative. Sometimes it does right itself, you know. I mean, Starmer. The pot calling the kettle black when it comes to sleaze. <laughs> when it comes to corruption. The man that gets his knighthood for protecting paedophiles and dodgy goings on in Northern Ireland. <laughs> ah, brilliant. Ah, sometimes it's just too funny. Pete Wisher asking Dame Clarissa Dick. <laughs> the Knight of the Realm to investigate the House of Lords. Ah, brilliant. The comedy just comes thick and, th thick, and thick and fast some days, so it does, it just does. There's days when I look at the news when I get in at night and just roll about for hours laughing. <laughs> uh, beer and coffee everywhere is mental. <laughs> Doug thinks I'm going round the twist. <laughs> oh, there are just days when it writes itself, honestly. Right, right, let's move on to the serious stuff, okay. Support the independent media, support Broadcast in Scotland, support Independence Live, support Indie Live Radio, support Caledon Media, support Cruise Radio, support the iScot magazine and the national newspaper, support independent vloggers and vloggers because they give you really good information and sometimes they even give you a laugh. <laughs> oh, health messaging. Face masks in enclosed public spaces. Clean hands and surfaces regularly. Two metre social distancing. When you're out in the boot, get a test, all right? And finally, partisan politics in my pockets, folks. The campaign is on. A nation in waiting welcomes the nation of the world, the nations of the world. The campaign is underway in earnest. It's time to get back to where we were. Tell you before, last time round, I a campaign with Radical Independence, a campaign with uh, Labour for Yes, a campaign with the Greens, a campaign with the SNP, a campaign with all the Yes groups that were doing work on becoming independent. So it's time to put the partisan politics back in the pockets, get your Yes badges out, and uh, Yes hats on, and get out there and win hearts and minds. Okie dokie. Sarah, you got any trouble? You've watched this whole show, you're supposed to be at work. <laughs> I can see your icon popping up, Sarah. Yeah, get back to work, you. Um, right, eh? Uh, you guys look after yourself. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Um, I, f I enjoyed, I, I enjoyed delivering this one because I say sometimes the comedy writes itself. I better get my, myself in gear so you kids have a nice day. <laughs>